Hello, this is Dr. Hannah Asil, and this is about sigma and pi bonds. These are due to overlap of orbitals when covalent bonds are being formed. So, we know that covalent bonds are formed due to sharing of electrons. Now, if these electrons are in s orbitals or s and p orbitals, they overlap in order to share the electrons. This overlap between s orbitals or s and p orbitals happens head to head. That means linear overlap or along the x-axis they will um, overlap in order to share the electrons. Now this kind of overlap is called a sigma bond and when this happens this is what we call a single covalent bond. So a single covalent bond is due to overlap between s orbitals or s and p orbitals that is called a sigma bond. Now that kind of bond is a strong bond, it is not easily broken. For example, if we say we have hydrogen molecule, hydrogen molecule is due to sharing of electrons between two hydrogen atoms. Each hydrogen atom has its electron in the 1s. When they share these electrons, the orbitals containing the electrons overlap and that forms a sigma bond and that is what uh, we call a single covalent bond. Also in ethane all the bonds are single covalent bonds so they are all sigma bonds. Now another type of bond is the pi bond. The pi bond is formed due to overlap of p orbitals and you know that p orbitals are um, parallel to each other so the overlap is side to side or we call it lateral overlap in order to share the electrons in these two orbitals. This kind of um, overlap is weak, it's not a strong overlap so the p orbitals um, when they overlap the bond formed is easily broken and that is called a pi bond. So remember that a pi bond is formed due to overlap of p orbitals. This happens side by side or what we call lateral overlap. The overlap is poor so the bond is easily broken. Now when do we have pi bonds? We have pi bonds if we have double or triple bonds. So a double bond between two carbons, for example, this is due to overlap of two types of orbitals. There is an overlap between an S and an S or an S and a P or these are sigma bonds that are along the x-axis. These are the um, stronger bonds. Now there is another overlap between the p orbitals and that forms the pi bond. So any double bond is actually made up of one sigma and one pi bond. For example, ethene. Ethene has, first of all, it has single bonds with the hydrogens. And we said all single bonds are sigma. It also has a double bond between the two carbons and we're saying the double bond is made up of two types of bonds, one sigma and one pi. So any double bond has one sigma, one pi. So if we're looking at ethene, the total number of sigma bonds in this molecule is the four with the hydrogens and one in the double bond. So that's a total of five sigma bonds. And I also have one pi bond in this molecule. If we have a triple bond, so this molecule, which is called ethine, um, it has a triple bond between the two carbons. Any triple bond is made up of one sigma and two pi bonds. That is how the triple bond is formed. 
For example, in HCN, there are three uh, or triple bonds between the carbon and the nitrogen. Between the carbon and the hydrogen, it's a single bond. That's a sigma. Now, between the carbon and the nitrogen, we have a triple bond. And we said any triple bond is formed of one sigma and two pi bonds. Nitrogen also has a triple bond. So in nitrogen, again, we have one sigma and two pi bonds. Remember that a triple bond is always shorter than a double bond, and the double bond is shorter than a single bond if we're comparing the bond lengths. So let's take a look at some questions. This question says, which row shows the correct number of covalent bonds in a molecule of methylpropene? So let's see, what is methylpropene? That is propene with a methyl group uh, on the uh, second carbon. That is methylpropene. And we're asked, how many total sigma bonds do we have? We said any single bond is a sigma bond. So the question is, how many single bonds do we have? Well, let's take a look. Remember that any CH3 is actually three sigma bonds with three hydrogens. So count the sigma bonds, the single bonds, and one of the double bonds. All of these are sigma bonds. So the total number of sigma bonds is what? It's 11. And I have only one pi bond because we said the double bond in the middle is actually one sigma and one pi. How many sigma and pi bonds are in this molecule? I would draw out the molecule. So what does this molecule look like? This is the molecule we're asked about. Remember that um, if the carbons do not have a total of four bonds, that means we had a triple bond between the two carbons on the left, and then we complete all of the others. This is the structure of the compound we're being asked about. So how many sigma? We said all single bonds are sigma, and any double or triple has one sigma. So the total sigmas, or the red bonds that I have here, the total here are 19 sigmas. Now how many pi? Remember we said a double bond has one sigma, one pi. A triple bond, we have a triple bond on the left between the two carbons on the left. That is made up of one sigma and two pi bonds. So we have a total of three pi bonds. HCN, usually the question would ask you to draw, sketch the shape of the sigma bond and the pi bonds. Remember we said between the C and the N, we have a triple bond, one sigma and two pi. We want to draw what a sigma bond looks like. This is how we draw it. A pi bond is two lobes. Remember that the p orbitals have two lobes, one on top and one below, with the uh, sharing between the positive uh, nucleus of the two atoms that are sharing the electrons. How many sigma bonds are present in this molecule? Again. Draw out the molecule. This is the molecule. This is how we draw it out. How many sigma? Any single bond is sigma, and any double or triple has one sigma. So the total sigma bonds here are 15. Complete to show the number of sigma bonds and pi bonds present in this molecule. What does this molecule look like? This is actually the molecule. Again, Every single bond is a sigma, and the triple bond has one sigma. So I have a total of eight sigma. Now, how many pi? We have a triple bond. Remember, a triple bond is one sigma, and how many pi? We have two pi bonds. Okay, again, how many sigma bonds are present in this? You draw it out. Every single bond is a sigma. 
the double and the triple have one sigma, we have a total of 13 sigma bonds. Please practice drawing out and counting the number of sigma and pi bonds. Covalent bonds can be sigma or pi. Uh, the table shows the number of sigma and pi in a molecule of nitrogen. So nitrogen, what does nitrogen look like? It has a triple bond. And we said a triple bond is made up of one sigma and two pi bonds. How do the orbitals overlap? Remember we said in the sigma bond, the overlap is called head-to-head -head or direct overlap while the pi bond is due to the side-to-side -side or lateral overlap of the p orbitals. So we have a structure here and we're asked how many, how many what? Pi electrons. Remember that a pi bond is made up of two electrons. So how many pi electrons do we have? Here we have three double bonds and we said each double bond has one pi, one pi bond made up of two pi electrons. So that means I have two times three, that is a total of six pi electrons. Remember each pi bond is made up of two electrons. The diagram shows this structure. What is the number of sigma bonds? Again, this is the structure that we have. Do not forget that the CN actually has a triple bond between it. Now, how many sigma? We said every single bond is a sigma. The double and triple have one sigma each. That is a total of how many sigma bonds? We have a total of six sigma bonds. Remember the double bond is one sigma one pi, the triple bond is one sigma and two pi. Draw label diagrams to show in terms of orbital overlap how the sigma and pi bonds are made in a double bond between two carbons. Remember the sigma bond is head-to-head -head overlap while the pi bond is a lateral or side-to-side -side overlap between p orbitals. This question says, in electrophilic reactions involving alkenes, the pi bond of the C double bond C is broken, suggests one difference between sigma and pi bonds that explains why the pi bond is broken in the reactions involving Alkenes. Remember that when alkenes react, it is the pi bond that breaks, not the single bond. And that is because the single bond, the electrons are in the sigma bond, are closer to the nuclei of the atoms. So there is stronger attraction forces between them, while the electrons in the pi bond are further away from the nuclei and therefore the pi bond is easily broken. Okay, I hope this was useful to you. Um, thank you for listening.